and they call it Hot Lana for a reason. It is red hot in here, and it doesn't get any hotter than the XFC back after five years. This is XFC 43. And yes, it is in Atlanta here at the Tabernacle. You take a look at what we have for you in our main card, which will go live on NBC Sports. Cyrus Fees alongside the great, the legendary Pat Militich. And what an awesome card we have for you here in Atlanta, folks. And of course, we have to make note here. This is the first major MMA event they can place in the pandemic which actually has fans in attendance. That means a lot of things, but of course, that means the temperatures have been taken, the masks are being enforced, and strict social distancing guidelines are in place. Also, here within this XFC bubble, we have been diligent with that as well. Every fighter, every staff, every executive, even the announcers ourselves, we have been tested, quarantined, and we are keeping this thing as safe as possible. But let's have a little bit of fun. Yes. Cyrus Fees alongside Pat Militich. And Pat, we're so excited about the relaunch of the XFC. And when you take a look at that card that kicks off on NBC Sports at 9 o'clock, it is insane how stacked it really is. No, and I'm going to keep it short. I mean, really, when we get down to business, down to brass tacks, like eight of these fights could be fight of the night. So that's an awful lot of the fights that are eligible for that in my mind. No doubt about it. You take a look at that card. How about the debut of Jessica Aguilar here in the XFC? Kenny Cross, Aston Bash, you're going to see them as well. They were the winners of the tryouts up in Michigan. These are huge names and, of course, new stars that are going to blow you away. And, of course, Jeremy Faria and Andre Sukumtat. Indeed. Wow. You know, you take a look at that, and it is going to be fireworks from beginning to end. Yeah, a lot of young hammers and veterans on the card. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and send it over to our correspondent, Blake Chadwick. He is standing by with the president of the XFC, Mr. Myron Malaki. I'm here with XFC President Myron Malaki tonight. Myron, the XFC is officially back. The XFC is back. Five years in the making. We're so excited to open the hexagon doors and show our fans here we go. The XFC is back. With the XFC officially being back in action tonight, what helps differentiate the XFC from the rest of the MMA promotions around the world? Everything makes XFC different. As soon as the hexagon door closes, these fighters know exactly what to expect as soon as they walk in there. And I'm going to tell you, we are a publicly traded company, which means we have the ability, like we announced last night, our fighters are now owners in the XFC. And it's very simple. Fight like you own the XFC. Hey, those are exciting words there from Myron Malaki. Of course, the fighters now owners here at the XFC. Take a look at this fight, which will kick us off here in the prelims. Young Guns, 170-pound welterweight bout between Nick Horton and Luis Navarro. With that being said, let's get a closer look at Nick Horton. This is a dream every kid had. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a professional athlete. And now I'm actually bringing it to fruition. Fans can expect to see me in the hexagon dominating. I always push the pace. I'm always bringing the fight. Uh, I never wait. I'm always in your face, in your grill. With this opportunity, November 11th, I'm going to show them all the hard work and how I've dedicated my life to this sport. My fighting style is wrestling based, came from a wrestling background, but now I try to use my wrestling as least as possible uh, so I can strike and use it defensively. But if someone gives me the neck, I'm gonna take it. I'm so confident that I'm gonna win this fight because I've dedicated my absolute life to this sport. I know I'm fighting Luis Navarro. I don't know much about him. I don't care, I'm gonna stick to my game plan. I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, keep working hard, and I'm gonna win. And yes, the fighters making their way in here already. Luis Navarro inside of the hexagon. Cyrus Fees and Pat Militich here on the call for you as we await Nick Horton, and you just heard a piece about Nick Horton, how exciting he is, you know, to be a part of this. This, of course, being a Young Guns bout, so these are the shining stars, the bright stars that are, of course, ascending here in the XFC. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape. 
for this bout. As you can see, a huge height advantage for Horton, but the reach advantage is on the other side for Lewis Blackzillion Navarro. What a fight we got to kick off the prelims. And let's send it into the hexagon to get it started with Blake Chadwick. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's fights are sanctioned by the Georgia State Athletic Commission with Matt Woodruff presiding. Tonight's judges are Will Fisher, Ken Coffey, and Northside Nate Mann. Tonight's referees will be Blake Grice and Herb Dean. Your cage side doctors will be Jeff Traub, Chris Horowski, and Andrea Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening bout of XFC 43 live at the Historic Tabernacle in Atlanta, Georgia is set in the welterweight division and will be in the XFC Young Guns division with three five-minute rounds of action. Introducing first to my left, fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands at five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 171 pounds. He is making his professional debut and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He is Luis Black Zillion Conde Navarro. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This kickboxer and wrestler stands at six feet, two inches tall. He weighed in at 170 pounds. Also making his professional debut and fighting out of Adrian, Michigan. He is Nick the Hammer. Horton. Referee for this fight, Blake Grice. George Allen is your referee for this contest as we get things started here at XFC 43. It's the Young Guns division here, Pat, and we gotta love watching guys like this, guys that are so excited to break into this organization. You know that their hunger, what they're gonna put into this fight is gonna be insane. And the fact they're both undefeated coming into this fight, 4-0 and 6-0, you don't see that in boxing very often. MMA, MMA, you see it a lot. They're willing to go at it. Luis Navarro there in the white tape there in the black trunks. Nick Horton there in the oh. red tape. And quickly, Nick Horton nearly got the takedown, but a quick scramble, and Navarro's back up. Beautiful inside trip there. Horton's just got to slow him down for a little bit, make him carry his weight, put some big brother muscle on him a little bit because uh, Navarro is an explosive striker. Nick the hammer Horton there, sitting in the guard of Navarro. All of his last four fights being stoppage victories. And he picked up the Lights Out Championship welterweight title there in that final one. And now posturing up very, very nicely here, Pat. Landed some great shots to the body. That's something you see more out of a veteran, and he's already got those skills. Horton doing a good job. There he is, staying on his back now. Getting a little bit high, does he? There he's trying to smarten up, but Navarro slipping out of that. Nice work and getting the takedown on Horton. <laughs> hey. Young Brazilian getting a takedown on an American wrestler. <laughs> no doubt about it. Like it. Well, a lot of back and forth action here. It's what we expected here out of the matchmaking, and we looked up and down this card. And we examined these fighters, and we knew it was going to be closely contested. Navarro there grabbing onto that single leg. Let's see if he's going to be able to complete it. Picks him up and drops him. Beautiful job. High crotch him, and the fact that. Navarro had that guillotine and assisted Horton. Now Horton's got a choke locked up here. He's got the arm trapped. If he can drop that right shoulder hard enough. Just got to be careful not to get his. Yeah, he bailed on it. He did. He looked to go into full mount. Not going to happen. And here comes Navarro. But he's underneath there, Pat. And I another, think he's, he's got, got it. He's got another locked up. Super tight choke there. Nice defense by Navarro. Nice job snaking out of that beautiful job. Well, this is where you have to evaluate whether your submission attempts over and over. Look at this wow. guy. Look at this guy. Beautiful takedown. Uh, whether your submission attempts constant, submission attempts are worth the energy. Oh, and here we go. Navarro, he may have something here. He's hanging off the side. He's, yeah, he's off the of side. Nick Horton. Get it. 
But that looks awful tight. The former Tough Enough champion looking to make an impact. Colton trying to strip that hand. Wow. Both guys in such a hurry to finish each other that they keep losing position. Something that my coaching hat would probably be going nuts over right now. <laughs> oh, and he's turning him in there. Another attempt this time from Nick the Hammer Horton. That's and they little, are just trading attempts here. Pat. That was a little bit of wrestling to and jujitsu there. Now he's got that leg locked. It's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. Can he keep it this time? Hooking the leg again. You see the expression on the face there of Luis Navarro still hanging in there, still pretty calm. How tight is that, Pat? It looks like he's got him right on the neck, but Left it seems like Navarro's still hanging in. He was able to keep his shoulder away from his own neck to keep that one artery open. So no nap time yet. 90 seconds left here in round number one. And if this is any indication of the action you're going to see on this card, uh, I think this is a beautiful thing because this has been a great war to kick things off here in the welterweight division. I tell you what, I don't want to be a judge judging this one. You know, that's, that's a tough one. Back and forth. He's got him stacked on his hips. That would be a good time to get the neck. Once again, just... now the two slick is Navarro. Oh, and a big swing, a big right hand there by the hammer. Face Navarro. It almost comes off like these guys are perfectly matched. It seems like they can answer each other, whether it be the striking, whether it be the grappling, the wrestling. It's a well-matched fight here. Tried to hit a fireman's carry. And lost position because of it. Big right hands. Those are landing. That could be trouble. George Allen watching very closely. Probably yelling at him about the back of the there head. There it is. Shut Not it there. down. Put it in the books. Luis Conde Navarro just picked up a win. I love wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. He said it perfectly. You got to appreciate that, Pat. Beautiful job getting out of numerous submission attempts. Eating a huge right hand and not even blinking. Let's take a look at this replay. This is where he tries to hit that fireman's carry and bails and loses position. That's something that, you know, most coaches are going to cuss at their athlete about. Just don't go for submissions or, or position that you're, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So he, he lost position. And here's Navarro doing a beautiful job getting out of the choke, keeping composure, not even changing the expression on his face. Look at that. And, hey, and kudos out there for Nick Horton as well. Horton had a nice showing as well. Big smile on the face there with a gesture to go with it there for Luis Conde Navarro. So that's how we kick off XFC 43 with an, an uh, incredible matchup there between a couple of welterweights that I think are going to be making noise all throughout this division here in the XFC. Bright futures for both these guys. Let's set it up to Blake Chadwick with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, at four minutes, 37 seconds of round number one, your winner via TKO in the blue corner, Luis Black Zillion. Conde Navarro! Impressive victory there by Luis Conde Navarro, and we, we talked about it, a couple of undefeated fighters here. Now one of those O's had to go, and here it is. There's the finish, Pat. I mean, he was relentless with the ground and pound. And he stood on the gas. He knew the referee could jump in at any time and stop it. They did here. such a good job of defending each other, back and forth action here, and it, you really wondered who was going to take that advantage, and it was Navarro right here. And like you said, he put the foot on the gas there, and that's how he got that finish. 100%. Horton not defending himself as far as fighting back or trying to get better position, and there's a satisfied young man there. Well, the O did not go for Luis Conde Navarro. The Black Zillion stays unbeaten in mixed martial outs. And here we go, and you take a look at the fight card. That is our main card starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC Sports. Take a look at this one. A fight we're excited about. Austin Bashing ends up for us to kick things off. A couple of very young fighters in the bantamweight division 
Then you get into these tournament matchups. So Zero Boye and Holaba, uh, Kenny Cross, Terrell Askew, and then, of course, Guillermo Faria and Sukumtat in the main event. And to really get to know these fighters better, let's take a look at a closer look here at Austin Bashi. I'm only 19 years old, but I'm young, I'm ready, I'm gonna show the world that I'm ready to compete with the best. Going into the try, I knew there was gonna be a lot of tough competitors there, and I knew I just had to show up and show out in front of everyone, and all the hard work at the gym was gonna pay off. I knew I was gonna earn my spot. What makes me an exciting fighter, I'm fast, I'm strong, I keep a high pace, always working. My fighting style is very well-rounded. I just have to adjust to my opponent. Strike, grapple, take them down, break them, and beat them. When uh, I lock eyes with my opponent, it's like, you do get that nervous feeling, but just as soon as that bell rings and it's ready to go, it's, it's normal. Very important to me to show XFC that I'm their guy, I'm the right guy, and I'm gonna make it to the top and be a champion for them. When I enter in that hexagon, they're gonna see a kid that really wants that belt, really wants to make it to the top, and all my uh, training is gonna show how tough I am. This is what I wanted since I was a kid, fighting in front of millions of people, and to finally get the opportunity, I'm very happy about it. So we take a look at that welterweight tournament as we're about to get started here with Ryan Dixon and Mike Hill, a couple of Canadians. When you look up and down this bracket, and you got a lot of top talent out here, including a guy like Stephen Newell that had to step in today. They had him set here as an alternate. He steps in today uh, due to an implication there uh, with Desir. But you look up and down here, LaRue Burley, another one to look at. Alejandro Sanchez, Bobby Nashti. Man, so much great talent up and down this welterweight tournament and a lot of guys with a lot of experience Pat uh, especially this next matchup here you got a couple of guys that are sitting at 15 fights 16 fights apiece these guys have been doing it for a long time now they have a huge opportunity as you can see getting ready to step in here and uh, you know these guys I look up and down here and I'm so impressed just with the talent level that they have brought together here at the XFC Pat and as they are making their way into the cage, you know they are all fired up. Yeah, Ryan Dixon at 10 and 5 just climbed in there. He's ready to rock and roll. He talked to Kenny and I yesterday at the hotel. And I tell you what, he said, I hope you're ready for a show because I'm going to put one on. Yeah, most definitely. You know, Ryan Dixon, they, you know, a lot of people call him one of the most dangerous fighters there in Canada. And, you know, this is his chance to make a mark on the international stage. You know, you fight regionally and now you're going to be seen all around the world. We're talking about, and I mean, this is unprecedented, out of the gate on this relaunch, 540 million homes that this broadcast is reaching. That just blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, people are actually going to learn our name. <laughs> they certainly are. <laughs> my kill has respectably made his way into the hexagon as well. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape on these two welterweights. As you can see, both guys over 30. And as you can see, just a slight reach advantage for Dixon, but the height advantage will go to the mercenary, Mike Hill, who's going to advance here in the quarterfinals. Let's send it up to Blake Chadwick. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a quarterfinal bout in the XFC Welterweight Tournament set with three five-minute rounds of action. Introducing first, he is fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands at five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 169 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of 10 wins and five losses. And fighting out of Toronto, Ontario. Corner. This street fighter stands at six feet, two inches tall. He weighed in at 171 pounds with a record of 11 wins, five losses, and one draw. And 
fighting out of Kelowna, British Columbia. He is Mike the Mercenary. The referee signed this bout, Blake Gross. Blake Grice, veteran referee, will be in charge for this one. And Mike Hill, Ryan Dixon, it'll be Ryan ready? Dixon there in the ready? blue, Mike Fight. Hill in the black, and we are officially underway. This one's set for three five-minute rounds. And we talked about it, Pat. I mean, a couple of guys that are very much veterans, 15 fights apiece. Uh, I believe 16 for Hill. These guys have been doing it for a while, so this is a big opportunity for them. Oh, good veteran. And um, Hill is not a street fighter, by the way. He's, yeah, I think he writes that in in jest. <laughs> you know, he's a very skilled guy. Oh, man, right down the middle. Here comes Dixon, and they are tied up in the clinch. Dixon looking for the takedown and gets it easily, Pat. I tell you what, that's showing some power and some, I mean, some authority to come in and land punches like that and then get a takedown that quickly and that easily. Yeah, Mike, Mike Hill not showing a whole lot of resistance there, and maybe he wants to bring this fight down to the ground. See how he was resting his legs up on his thigh and then pinching them with his arm and keeping his hips immobile. I mean, that that's a very, very... He's got... He's locking this up tight, buddy. That's all about Is it? Yeah, that's it already. Ryan Dixon, are you kidding me? Gets the win over Mike the Mercenary Hill. And, and I think it's that the strikes early on that really got things started. And he's in a very, very bad way right now. And you got to wonder if we dig a little deeper, what is going on with Mike Hill? He might have got hurt on the takedowns. I mean, like I said, it seemed like he very, very low resistance when he went for that takedown. So, yeah, let's, let's take a look here at the replay and see exactly what went down. And right down the middle, he hit him. It's not just punches. It's a punches with authority and purpose and then dumped him right away. Yeah, just seemed relatively easy there for Dixon. It looked like he was picking up a, a pillow full of feathers, buddy. Exactly. That's some serious power. Look at that replay. He got underneath the neck, and there it was. And we were not expecting that. But Mike Hill overwhelmed here by Ryan Dixon. Ryan Dixon will advance into the semifinals of this welterweight tournament. Kind of caught us all off guard there. Big win for Ryan Dixon. And let's get the official decision and go to Blake. Ladies and gentlemen, at 54 seconds of round number one, your winner, the rear naked choke in the blue corner, Ryan Dixon. Extremely impressed there. And look at that. He is saying it perfectly. I think everybody heard it here in the arena at the Tabernacle. He said, I want that belt. He's feeling it here. And well, that is the way you go about it. Get it done under a minute and make a statement here in the XFC. He backed up what he said yesterday with action. That is for sure. Here he comes forward, landing the beautiful right hand. And it's guys in MMA who can punch in bunches and transition. He transitioned to the takedowns, backed up by his, and set up by his punching, and immediately locks on this rear choke and gets the tap. I tell you what, he knows what he's doing. He's well-trained. That camp has a lot of great fighters, by the way. No, yeah, absolutely. And the funny thing is we didn't even get a chance to dig further into it. It went so fast, but this was obviously a little redemption for Dixon, who had lost to Hill by decision previously. So, I mean, you talk about advancing in the tournament, getting that much closer, and you know, redeeming one of those losses earlier in her career. It is a big night for that man, Ryan Dixon, making a statement and now being greeted by Myron Malaki. So let's take a look at it. Ryan Dixon moves on in the tournament. And of course, those semifinal matchups are going to happen in February here at XFC 44 as we dig deeper into that. As you can see, he will meet the winner of Bobby Nash and Spencer Jett. That'll be a little bit later on tonight. Wow, things getting started with a bang here in Atlanta at the Tabernacle. So take a look at this main card. Yes, indeed, our main event, Guillermo Faria, straight out of Brazil, an XFC veteran taking on Andre Sukumtat. Pat, I'm excited about this one. It's going to be incredible, but then I love this. Jessica Aguilar, this has to be the biggest signing thus far for the XFC. And she is going up against a monster in Taylor. That's going to be a hell of a fight. Well, we talked about Jessica Aguilar. We're very excited about seeing her, but there's another piece of that puzzle, and that is Dynamite Danielle Taylor. Let's take a look 
and a closer look at Ms. Taylor. Being a deputy sheriff and being a professional fighter, it goes hand in hand. You don't know who you're gonna go against. You don't know the outcome of the fight. Anything can happen. You could be winning the fight, next thing you know, you get head kicked. I love that. I like that it's a challenge. You don't know what's gonna happen. I feel it's important to be a role model because I work for the sheriff's department and that I'm a female fighter, I gotta carry myself to a higher standard. And that's how I like to carry myself. I like to show women that you don't have to be super yoked out, you don't have to be really tall to be a fighter and handle yourself. The fans are gonna see an amazing show. When I enter that cage, they're gonna see why they call me dynamite. I'm small, I'm deadly, I'm explosive. I throw volume and I have a lot of power behind my punch. My goal in the XFC is to be their strawweight champion. I wanna own that belt. That's my belt, it has my name on it. And that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make it happen. Jessica Aguilar, she has a lot to offer, but it's not about what she's gonna do. It's if she could stop what I'm gonna do. Jessica, let's show them how explosive we can be and may the best woman win. Sounds pretty convincing to me. Let's take a look at what went down yesterday at the weigh-ins here at the Tabernacle as both ladies made weight and things got very, very tense here, Pat. Well, the ladies are very spirited, aren't they? They very much are. <laughs> They're not trying to sell tickets. They just, that's the way it goes with women sometimes. So there it is. That is a huge part of tonight's fight card on NBC Sports starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You see it right there, Aguilar and Taylor in the co-main leading up to Guillermo Faria and Andre Sukumtat. What a matchup. What a double dose of MMA. And I'll tell you what, let's get into our next matchup here, which is a beauty. Alex Sanchez and LaRue Burley. This is your tale of the tape brought to you by Setlock. As you can see, the age difference in a very, very big way. The advantage should go to Alex Sanchez, but the reach also will go to Sanchez as well. Let's get our introductions on and go to Blake Chadwick. Ladies and gentlemen, XFC 43 continues with the following quarterfinal bout in the XFC Welterweight Tournament set with three five-minute rounds of action. Introducing first to my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner. This striker stands at five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 170.5 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of nine wins and four losses and fighting out of Mesa, Arizona. He is the Rue Cannibal Burley. Let's go, champ. And his opponent to my left, fighting out of the red corner. This boxer stands at five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 170.5 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of eight wins and two losses and fighting out of San Luis, Rios, Colorado, Mexico. He is Alex Hulk Sanchez. Woo. The referee for this bout, Herb Dean. So the great Herb Dean presiding over this one as we move in to our next matchup here in the welterweight tournament there with Luke Burley. You see he'll be rocking the red trunks in this one there in the multicolor and the black. That's going to be Alex Hulk Sanchez. And this fight officially underway, set for three five-minute rounds here in Atlanta. Both these men have great boxing skills. We're going to see some fireworks here out of these guys. You know, so much has gone into this fight card here, Pat. You Not only do you have great fighters here, but they're so excited to be owners of the XFC. It's kind of unprecedented waters here as it's a publicly traded company and all fighters officially now have shares. They are controlling their own destiny here. I think it's very important that they understand how, how big that is to own the company that you work for. I mean, there's, there's people that retire all the time from different corporations. <laughs> very true. And uh, have a vested interest in their company. So this is, this is a great deal. Absolutely, and I think all these guys very, very excited about that as LaRue Burley Controls there, looks for a spinning kick, is not able to land, and Sanchez looks to counter. 
as they are kind of feeling each other out here in round number one. That spinning back kick had it been a few inches the other direction, would have been directly on the liver. And that hurts. LaRue Burley able to go 3-0 and in the Bellator cage, including a big knockout over Bubba Jenkins. Huge matchup, big win for him in that one. And then Alex Sanchez, seven of his wins have come by way of stoppage. He is a machine. He doesn't like to take it to the judges by any stretch. No, sir. And he just had a beautiful counter right hand there. Ooh, Burley tried to throw a jab to the body and paid the price for that. Who's going to advance in the tournament here? The welterweight tournament, also the lightweight tournament. A little bit later, you're going to see a lot of that on our main card. And a nice little combination by Alex Sanchez. Answers back with a low kick and a side kick right there to the body. Both guys still showing a lot of respect for each other. They're, they're aware of the other, the other's power. You know, things got a little spicy at the weigh-ins, but for the most part, these guys, I think they kind of feel connected to each other, being a part of this relaunch of the XFC. And we've seen a lot of respect just in the hotel, in the bubble here in Atlanta. These guys kind of feel like they're all on the same team, but only one of these men can advance in the tournament. Ultimately, no matter what you say before the fight, it comes down to the fight. So whether you're trying to sell tickets or not, it always comes down to what you do in here. Ooh, there we go. Getting tied up there. As you can see, already traded shots. This thing getting ugly. Burley had good head movement there, getting out of the way. And then Sanchez disappeared on him on that takedown attempt. Rube Burley really working on that outside leg kick. Staying very, very busy. The more aggressive fighter, but Sanchez has done a great job of answering. No true advantage here between these two as we make our way through round number one. Last time LaRue Burley was in action, it was a W for the Cannibal. Lands a big shot. Alex Sanchez looking to answer. But Burley continues to walk him down here, Pat. You like the strategy? Well, he's doing a good job being, you know, the, the leadoff fighter. Um, he did get clipped with a pretty good right hand there and showed he's still got a great chin because that was a hard right hand. But uh, just going to keep that chin down a little bit more just in case. Talked about that win over Bubba Jenkins. That was part of a six-fight run that he had to kick off his pro career. Then a little bit of up, a little bit of down. But he's looking to keep the momentum going here, looking for a takedown, taking the back. LaRue has been working on his wrestling quite a bit. Calls himself a striker, but his wrestling has improved. Can't really get away with not being well-rounded these days when it comes to mixed martial arts. You kind of have to have every facet of the game. Yeah, 100%. If, you're, if you want to be the best striker in MMA, well, you've got to be a very good wrestler to get it done and stop takedowns. Now really laying heavy there on the back of Alex Sanchez is LaRue Burley, who has controlled the momentum of this fight. He throws the knee to the body, and Sanchez comes out swinging. Burley ducking that big elbow. I felt the wind over here. Cyrus feeds alongside Pat Militich here as we are three fights in on our prelim card. Looking forward to our huge main card, 9 p.m. NBC Sports, we hope that you'll join us for that. Final moments here in round number one. Who is going to make the big push here at the end of the round? And I think the answer to that is LaRue Burley. Uh, Burley has really kept his foot on the gas uh, since the opening bell, and I think he's made a big impression uh, on the brass here at the XFC. I think he takes round one. Yeah, showing, showing really good head movement and definitely in my mind scored more points. Let's take a look at some replays from that round. Both guys getting a little bit wild. Burley trying to get in on those legs and Sanchez says, nope, I'm getting out of dodge on that. And big, big uppercut. And then he gets clipped with the counter right hand from Sanchez. So anytime you risk, anytime you try to do damage to your opponent, you risk being damaged. So you got to really cover your bases defensively while you're in there. And here he is trying to get that takedown. Was not successful, though. We go to the corner there of LaRue Burley. 
He was a very, very busy fighter there in round number one. You could tell the adrenaline was most definitely on high. He's been excited to get inside of that hex, uh, one of the more animated uh, weigh-ins as well. At yesterday's weigh-ins, he is all fired up here and looking to take his place here in the XFC, get to the semifinals and see where he goes from there. Everybody with the eye on that XFC welterweight championship. Ready. You know, if I'm saying coach, as coach, I'm saying, hey, we've got to attack that low lead leg more. It was very successful. He just barely used it. And you can end fights with that, literally just to end them. Your, your opponent won't be able to walk. So I'd like to see him attack that more. Trying to set up that right hand is Larue Burnley. Alex Sanchez now showing a little bit of urgency here, Pat. Uh, coming out swinging. Well, he probably got chewed up by his coach. To be honest with you, he was very inactive in my mind, uh, fighting defensively the entire first round, for the most part, anyway. Burley and Sanchez. Nice jab there by LaRue Burley. Trying to get things started once again. Can he keep that pace all the way through? It's a big question mark in this matchup. And you talk about that age difference. And look at that. That punch rush from Burley. But Sanchez with a beautiful counter. And that's what we talked about. Sanchez has great counters. He knows how to time them. And Burley better be careful. Yeah, the left hand, that hook that Sanchez is throwing. The first one, you could tell Burley respected it because he ducked the second time. Burley walking him down. Good job thinking with that jab. Need more of that. Keep him guessing on when he's actually coming. He can already tell. And here comes Sanchez now. Put the foot on the gas pedal in his corner. And Sanchez now getting a little bit aggressive. He sees it. He may have hurt LaRue Burley a little bit with these right hands. He's timing him well. Burley showing a lot more respect here for the game of Sanchez here just a few minutes into round two. Early doing a good job landing those kicks on the lead leg now. But that double jab to that cross that we were talking about there from Sanchez, I mean, boxing fundamentals. It works. Use it. We have just about a seven or eight year age difference here. That advantage going to Sanchez. The reach as well goes to the younger fighter, Alex Hulk Sanchez. Early out there to confirm the age, nothing but a number. I always feel that you... I feel like you proved that. Didn't you box this summer? <laughs> what? Well, I, I kickboxed. What did we get? What are you it, was with my, it was with my good friend, Michael Dunn. <laughs> we had a good time. Sure did. No, but I, I always felt in having all the years of coaching and watching athletes go through their career that, from my standpoint anyway, what I saw is from 28 to 36, an athlete is the strongest that they'll ever be and the best that they'll ever be. And so I called it, I kind of just called that the man strength years. Okay. Uh, that's when they come into there. So Burley's still in that band in my mind, right? Certainly is. Striking while the iron is hot here is LaRue Burley. Good job getting out of the way, Burley. And over. A lot of great feints, you said it. Trying to hit those angles is LaRue Burley. You know, and I'm trying to be quiet. During this COVID thing, when you don't have a lot of crowd to cover your voice, you know, I try to be quiet so I'm not giving instructions to anybody. So I feel like I'm calling a golf a golf <laughs> event sometimes. I apologize to the fans, but just trying to be quiet. I think you do great on a golf broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love golf. Golf is my favorite sport, actually. Now, little factoids all night long. We'll be here all night. They're digging in deep. Heavy is LaRue Burley. And how much damage is he really doing here as Sanchez looking to get out? And all it is is another minute of control here for LaRue Burley as he continues to put together some good rounds on the scorecard. Exactly. It's like football. You're controlling the ball. The clock is burning. It's ticking. You're, you're winning the round. Very important, you know, that you, in those periods, that you are the one controlling. Is that low leg attack. Exactly, straight into the right hand and see, very Sam, unorthodox. Did you see Burley move his, his leg to the back there? So that tells me it's starting to hurt a little bit. Sanchez, throw a few punches, set that up, go back to that. Keep attacking that same point. 
Some unorthodox setups here from LaRue Burley. 30 seconds left. Kind of springs off of those feet and jumps forward there for a number of shots there. Big punch rushes for LaRue Burley. And Alex Sanchez is willing to weather that storm and just land those big thunder shots. Sanchez there dives for a takedown here as he heard that 10 second mark and maybe looking to score a little bit because, you know, I mean, if I'm sitting here judging this fight and I will not say that I am, you know, capable of that, but I will say this, I think Burley's ahead. I think it's too yeah. low. Yeah, no, I think you're correct. And I think you are qualified to judge. You've seen enough fights, been around for a long time. So let's take a look at some action. There's Burley. Getting very aggressive, using that balk right hand several times. Many people call it a Superman punch. And here's Sanchez coming forward, being aggressive. And Burley with the head movement. That's the key. The seems, fighters that have like good Sanchez. head movement. What's that? Go ahead. No, it seems like Sanchez just, he was aggressive there for a couple of minutes, then he kind of fell back into his old ways. Yeah, and you know, hey, I think the head movement of Burley had a lot to do with that. If you're if you're if you're throwing ten punches and landing one. Uh, it can be a little frustrating and tiring. And breathing very deep there is Alex Sanchez. And you come into this fight, you see the reach, you see the numbers, you're, you're going to edge it over to a guy like Alex Sanchez, but LaRue Burley is bucking all that and has looked good. We have him both, both of us have him up two rounds to zero here. We go into our third and final round, which means Fight. you almost got to throw caution to the wind here, Pat. And I want to see a lot of aggression here out of Alex Sanchez. I'd like to see real-time scoring with every athletic commission so that the corners and athletes know who's ahead. I mean, combat sports are, what, one of the few sports in my mind, at least, you know, you, you look at the scoreboard in football, basketball, you know who's winning. You know, there's a reason that the Patriots would always come back, you know, and, and everything was so dramatic. It made it so, so it would be nice to see that in my mind. Well, I will say this as a ring announcer, that's going to kill all the drama when I'm doing a decision. No, it just gives me more reasons <laughs> to argue with you because we disagree on who's who's winning uh, the, when the judges call it wrong, potentially. Right. And well, that would just be two or three days straight here. <laughs> that's just good. for That's good TV, buddy. Come it on. sure is. It sure is. <laughs> Sanchez and Burley there, and here goes Burley with that same fire. He is not taking, gosh, I feel like we're talking about a race. You talked about too much uh, pedal to the metal here, but Burley has not really slowed up. He continues to push the pace here. Now into the third round, we've gone, you know, 11 straight minutes, and this guy just continues to come forward. See how he's moving his head, and Sanchez hit, hit in the air again, I'm telling you. And then he gets countered and gets clipped. That can make a person gun shy. It really can. Sanchez really unable to get that reach involved. He's been able to, really unable to land that jab to set anything up. Right. He's so focused on the counter that he's not using that humongous reach advantage that he has, and it's pretty formidable. And Burley's using enough offense that Sanchez can never really set his speed hardly. You know what I mean? And that's, that's pretty important to do that. Kind of seems like the same pace that Burley had from round number one. He's carrying into round number three. And because of the way that he fights, the way that he strikes, he's really hard to time. Yeah. Well, he's, he's fought a, a lot of very, very high-level opponents. And in this sport, more than anything, I think, one of the biggest definers of a fighter's toughness and how good they are and how experienced they are is the quality of opponents that they've gone against. Their game gets much tighter because of that. Just trying to land those counters there. And he could really have something here. We're only halfway through. Round number three, still two and a half minutes left. And Sanchez has the power to knock you on your back. And that's what he's counting on here as we have him down a couple of rounds. Ooh, look at that combination there by Burley. That's time going low and using the body. And again, the one thing that he lands 100% of the time is what? The low kick to that low leg below the knee to the. You know, you've got the fibula, the small bone that runs along the tibia. And it's not that hard to break that bone. And that muscle on the outside of the leg there is so sensitive. I can't even I can't even explain to you how bad it is to get kicked there hard. It, it's it's horrible. So he, he really should be setting it up with his hands and attacking that more often. Burley might not be walking right now. He's done a lot more of it. 
Welterweight tournament here in full swing. It's a quarterfinal matchup between LaRue Burley and the red, Alex Sanchez and the black. Who is going to take that step here and get closer? We've already seen Ryan Dixon, the Canadian, make his move in the tournament. And here comes Burley that time, lands the big right hand. Beautiful combo. Notice no head movement out of Sanchez. Easy to hit, but doesn't move, right? Stationary target. Big swings and misses there by Alex Sanchez, who may be showing a little bit of desperation here. When Sanchez going high with a head kick after all those low kicks. Burley started reaching to try and grab that leg. Got to be very careful lowering your hand on those kicks. Oh, and there it is, that left hand. Lightning quick left hook set that one up, and Alex Sanchez still trying to stay in here. We are officially at the one-minute mark. Sanchez dives in for the takedown, well-timed. But where is he going to go from here? He has to really work hard. He's in the guillotine. Got the arm in. It's going to be it. tough to finish it. That's how he does it. He's cranking on it, buddy. Yeah, he got there it. it is. LaRue Burley okay. Okay. I know. getting the win, handle. moving on to the tournament. What a moment for Burley, the cannibal. Great Going performance. Great performance out of him. Really controlled the pace, striking. And finishes an arm in guillotine. Hey, yeah. what, what's that show you? I mean, just well, really has, in the right place, right time. And you know what? You got to give him credit because when his career started, the first few times I saw him, his ground was not very good. It really was not. And he showed how much he's been working. And there's his head movement again. You know, he really just wore Sanchez out over three rounds. And here's the finish. Look at him locking it up right away. Getting that in place. Nice job get, securing the guard position. Very important, locking the legs. It still didn't even look like it was fully oh, oh, he was underneath cranking. there, but he, he really put a lot of power into yeah, it. Yeah, and he's leaning left on it, pinching down with that arm. Here it is again. So he does not have guard yet. Throws that punch. He knows he's got to get that leg out of there. And there it is. Locks it up. And, and like you it said, down. cranking it and leaning to the left, that really made the difference for LaRue Burley, who is able to tap out his opponent here at XFC 43. One more time, one more angle. And look at the face out there, Blake Chadwick. You can see it, he knows it's tight as well. Yeah. Let's send it up to Blake. At four minutes, 21 seconds of round number three, your winner via guillotine choke in the blue corner, LaRue Cannibal. Impressive work there by LaRue Burley, who now moves to 10 and 4, and more importantly, moves on in the tournament. LaRue Burley getting the win here over Alex Sanchez. He will meet the winner of Stephen Newell, the man that just stepped into the tournament today, and Carson Hardman. So it'll be an all American quarterfinal, excuse me, semifinal matchup at XFC 44 in February as we're starting to carve that out here. One more time here with the replays. Beautiful job again by LaRue. Look at him get that right leg out of there. He knows he's got to get it out. Giving it everything right there. One thing we have seen is that these guys are on another level when it comes to finishing the fight. They do not want to let this thing go to decision. It has been all finishes thus far here at XFC 43 in Hotlanta. So there's your main event, staring us right in the face, Guillermo Faria out of Brazil, taking on Andre Sucumtat, originally from Laos, now fighting out of America. A lot of hype coming into that matchup and a lot of hype behind that woman on the left, that being the American Jessica Aguilar taking on Danielle Taylor in the co-main event. Taylor feeling like she should not be an underdog in this matchup. So uh, let's keep things moving and let's take a look at another one of our incredible fighters. This time, it is the great Jessica Aguilar. I have achieved what every fighter trains for every day, is to become the best in the world. What I want to accomplish in the XFC is for myself. I have unfinished business. What goes through my head before and 
walking into the hexagon. I'm at my calmest. I'm zen out. I don't hear anything. I'm just super laser focused. I decided to sign with the XFC because they really wanted me. They really were excited to have me. I wanted to be with a promotion that really values who I am, what I've done, and what I can do for the promotion. I really want to share my story and motivate whoever it is that's watching. Because I started from nowhere. I never, you know, dreamed that I was going to be a world champion or that I was going to be under these lights. And it's a great honor for me to be the trailblazer of the LGBTQ community, the female MMA community, and just the MMA community itself. in the XFC. I hope you're ready for a battle, man. What I want to accomplish in the XFC is for myself. I have unfinished business. Yes, indeed. We take a look at the fight card here. Bastia Prezzo kick things off, and of course, everybody talking about Aguilar and Taylor, but what about the boss, Kenny Cross? That also is a very high-profile matchup, as Cross, of course, won the tryouts, and a huge signing here for the XFC, a guy that's an incredible up-and-coming fighter, taking on Jarrell Askew, who is not going to roll over. That, of course, is in our lightweight bracket. We haven't even really dipped into that. But now it is time to do so, as it is going to be a big matchup here with Bobby Nash and Spencer Jeb, as you can see them right there. 155 pound tournament. It is all happening here at XFC 43. O'Connor and Caceres, and one thing you are going to see here, Pat, is this Height and reach advantage is damn near <laughs> mind blowing. Uh, it's something I don't think I've ever seen before. Uh, this is next level. It is, and you've got to be creative. When you're the shorter fighter, you have to figure out how to cover that gap. You're either outside that range or all the way inside. There is no in between. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape, and that's where you can really see this thing. It is uh, something special. Big matchup here, as it is the big nasty here, Tom O'Connor, five foot six. Taking on Caceres, who is six foot two. That's right, incredible, incredible tale of the tape. Let's set it up to Blake Chadwick, who has our introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a quarterfinal bout in the XFC lightweight tournament set with three five minute rounds of action. Introducing first, standing to my left, fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands at six feet two inches tall. Weighing in at 156 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of 15 wins, 10 losses, and one draw. And fighting out of Miami, Florida, he is no way. This BJJ and Muay Thai style fighter stands at five feet, six inches tall. He weighed in at 155 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of eight wins and one loss <laughs> and fighting out of Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. He is Tom Big Nasty. They're free for this bout, George Allen. So George Allen is going to be your referee here and Tom Big Nasty O'Connor. Funny enough, much, much smaller. You ready? Than you Jose, ready? no way, Caceres. It is O'Connor there in the red and Caceres in the black and we are out of pop in here in the lightweight division. O'Connor moving that head on his way in. Gonna have to. Gotta watch out for the jabs and definitely watch out for the knees from a fighter that is this tall. 
You don't want to chew on kneecaps. Well, it's something you dealt with for quite a long time, didn't you, Pat? I Are mean, you calling me short? Well, well, <laughs> well. You know, but that's the thing. If, you, if you're able to close that distance, you really knock that out of the park, and the reach is instantly gone. And look sure. what O'Connor's doing. He's pushing the pace, working on the clinch, but Casera is able to turn him around. Well, the main thing is, is look, yes, if you've got good head movement, I mean, you can negate that reach pretty quickly and slide inside. Um, it's just the, the, the danger of covering the gap. That is that, that transitional phase that you've got to master uh, to keep yourself out of trouble. It also helps with spelling bees <laughs> that you don't get hit that much on the yeah. way in. There it is. Just a minute in here as you can see Connor, O'Connor, oh, excuse me, trying to dig in here against Caceres as they continue to jockey for position here and round at number one. Three five minute rounds here on the Stay docket busy, as this is our first lightweight tournament quarterfinal yeah. matchup here at XFC 43. Caceres, nice job. Now he should just push off, but he digs back in. Good job working to the back. Connor turning back into him. Good job. This fight for O'Connor, he'd love it to be here all night. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. This guy is red hot right now, eight and one, and currently on an eight fight win streak is big nasty Tom O'Connor. You know, if I'm Caceres' coach, I'm saying, look, if you're gonna be in, in close, at least go to the tie clinch and start working on these where you have a distinct advantage. No way Caceres here, Jose Caceres looking to land that nice little uppercut underneath on O'Connor. Not a whole lot of action here. Well, there is a lot of action, a lot of exertion, but not a whole lot of damage being done yet. As Caceres and O'Connor continue to push hard here, and I don't think folks, even if, if you're a layman and you've never trained, just working the clinch like that is so tiring by itself. I mean, constantly changing positions here, pushing against your opponent, it really can wear you out. Yeah, I mean, the wrestling and grappling, those are anaerobic activities. Figuring out how to function when your muscles are out of oxygen. Beautiful trip there by O'Connor. And boxing and kickboxing are aerobic activities. So these guys have to find a balance in their conditioning. And everybody's different, so it's, it's really, uh, you know, not to just learn the techniques to do this, but to figure out how you are optimally, you know, having the best aerobic and anaerobic conditioning. That's a process. And he's got a double leg. So Sarah's working on that takedown, trying to come around the back, those big, long arms, trying to snake on a big, nasty Tom O'Connor. And one thing that uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention, of course, that Jose Caceres uh, finished, uh, who many people could consider the welterweight king of the world right now, Kamara Usman, and the only man to ever defeat Kamara Usman. Pretty impressive. It is, very impressive. Usman, a very powerful, uh, powerful wrestler. He's on the Olympic ladder. Very dangerous guy, so very impressive. Yes, indeed, O'Connor and, and Caceres. Training now, as you can see, O'Connor in a great position. I mean, that's another thing. You talk about a much taller opponent, lengthier opponent. If you can get him down on the ground, that really negates it. Not only just closing the distance, but bringing him down to your level. And this is where O'Connor feels very, very comfortable. And now creating a backpack here on Jose Caceres. Finally got those legs in. Now he's crossed the legs. Back when he goes back to just putting the legs in. And I'll tell you what, people that are good at that, it is difficult to get them off your back. Let the cage go. Trying to get underneath that neck. Push off of the cage. Hold on he to it. might have this, but he's putting it. Nope. It's kind of falling off of the side, though. And then readjusting here is Tom O'Connor, the Canadian, looking to put the finish in here on Jose Caceres. And uh, Caceres fittingly says no way to that one. Caceres trying to hook his feet and come out the back door here, out between O'Connor's legs. He's got to get him underneath his cross him across O'Connor's torso there to be able to get out of there. The hips are not effective when your opponent's sitting that far up on your chest, so he's bumping your hips, that's no good. Now he's got his legs where they need to be. Out the back door he goes. Going for a leg lock now. So yeah, very, uh, very interesting round here between O'Connor and Caceres. Caceres isn't getting up quick. Yeah, it took his time getting up. A little worn out here as O'Connor has 
really brought the fight here, and I, I think we both agreed that that's how he was going to win, is you can't allow Caceres to get comfortable, uh, to get any sort of rhythm going, and I think that's exactly what Big Nasty did. He shut that down. Yeah, he covered the gap, and they spent, the, spent that entire time pretty much in close. O'Connor fighting his fight. Take a look at Jose Caceres. Caceres. Getting worn out here. And Holding his mouth open for that water like a baby bird <laughs> waiting for mama. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he was ready for that round to end indeed. O'Connor has to be feeling real good right now. We talked about riding that eight fight win streak. He knows he is in a very, very good place right now. But to make it through this lightweight tournament, that would be the icing on the cake. Can he do it tonight in Atlanta? Tom Big Nasty O'Connor feeling it out there. Breathing in very deep there is Jose No Way Caceres. You ready? Fight! Round two underway. It's one step for three fives. Not going to be easy for Caceres to do it, but how does he kind of get himself back into this fight here, Pat? By keeping his back off the cage like that, pushing off, creating distance, using his jab, using his reach, using his knees. Not getting into these wrestling matches with O'Connor. Some, sometimes having that uh, lower base there kind of helps, you know, and, and obviously O'Connor, it's worked very, very well for him. It worked well for you back in the day. Got it, Mr. Militant. You, you, you gotta play the odds. Yeah, you absolutely have to. You have to make them fight your game. Caceres, oh that's for the first time, really able to use those knees to his full advantage. And that's a, it could be a huge difference maker. And now getting a little sloppy. Here comes O'Connor. Gets airborne and lands a right hand. Caceres loses his balance. O'Connor's putting it on in here. Caceres, of course, coming off of a loss. He doesn't want another one of those in the row. As you can see, Tom O'Connor landed short shots. Good hand control there by Caceres, but he's got to get up with that. Now, how hurt is Caceres here? I mean, he seems like now he pops right back up. I think he's more not really hurt, but just worn out. Fatigued, very fatigued. But, you know, did he have a tough weight cut? You know, there's a lot of things. How does he even get to 155 in the first place? I think is the real question. Right, right. <laughs> Well, this could be the you know the sign for him that he needs to go up. The relaunch of XFC, and of course, we're all awaiting fans included. Of course, the big main card on NBC Sports. That's going to be a 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We hope that you join us for that. Digging down deep here is Tom O'Connor, who has really made his money here, right up against the cage. Constantly staying low here on Caceres. Caceres obviously has very long hands, always tired. Maybe. Very fatigued. O'Connor keeping the pressure on. There's a lot going on in, in this inside battle. A lot of positioning, a lot of fatiguing stuff, a lot of pummeling. And that's what I was trying to emphasize a little bit earlier there, Pat, is just that I, I don't think a lot of fans understand what that is like. And unless you've trained, and gosh, I've done maybe a few weekends, but just that clinch work is, is really just extremely tiring. Yeah, you want to lose some calories, get with a wrestler and do what's called hand fighting and fight for position with them. And yeah, you're, you're going to get... But if you're watching on your TV screen, you can't really see that, right? Yeah, it's hard to understand, stuff. yeah, unless you've actually done it. And it's, it's a great workout, and it's a great self-defense tool. I mean, you know, teaching someone how to hand fight is a great self-defense tool. Tom O'Connor looking pretty golden here. Still in round two, still in control, and really maintaining the pace of this fight. He's going to go low again. Nice job grabbing the back ankle. Now he's got a circle with that. Nice job. Now Caceres there trying to get underneath the chin. Let's see if he can snake those long, lanky arms around the neck of O'Connor, unable to do it. And here comes O'Connor again, short elbows, short punches. This is where a tall fighter is at a distinct disadvantage when the, sh the shorter fighter gets cross sides on you. Very difficult to get him back in guard. Look at him just popping around, very mobile, compact. Watch the up kicks coming at you from there. 
O'Connor can pretty much do it any way he wants. A lot of subs on his record. Loves the rear naked choke. But he can also knock you out cold. Ken O'Connor adds to that finish. He tried to head kick him twice in a row. Oh, and then he threw a little, uh, I don't know what, exactly what that was. Uh, really, the uh, handstand kick there for Tom O'Connor. Little capoeira. Exactly. That's what I was looking for. Well done. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Well, O'Connor, I mean, just nonstop busy in here in this. You know, they've been fighting in a, a phone booth, basically, right? And the, the shorter guy is going to always have the advantage there for the most part. Now, this is where Caceres yes. can really, really, uh, you know, get this fight back and really do some damages with those big knees. But he doesn't have any steam left to, to put any heat on him, unfortunately, you know, when he gets there. Ten seconds, gentlemen. So we hear just a few seconds left here in round number two. Very entertaining fight here to kick Seven. off our lightweight tournament as Tom O'Connor. I believe notches another round in his favor. Certainly. And Caceres has to go back to the drawing board, as you can see in the corner of O'Connor. Let's take a look and see how it all went down. Early in the round, O'Connor throws that kick, misses, gets a hammer fist in the back of the head, but scrambles out of that bad position. And here he comes. Offense. And just uh, cross sides position is where we talked about such a distinct advantage for the shorter fighter. Goes knee on belly then, lands the elbow. Beautiful job. There's one kick and then, yeah, let's get, let's get creative here. Little cartwheel kick after this. I think he feels he's, safe to say he thinks he's in control when he's pulling yeah, stuff off like uh, that, buddy. As the kids would say, he's feeling himself tonight. Yes. Tom O'Connor. Doing a little extra here for us in Atlanta. And why not? You know, you, we got that speech at the weigh-ins at the fighter meeting as well for Myron and how passionate is he and really instills that in these fighters that he wants them to go the extra mile, wants them to quote unquote bring the violence. And that's exactly ready? what they Fight. are doing. Third and final round, O'Connor and Caceres. Well, and the quote, one of the greatest quotes ever. The two most important days in your life, the day you're born and the day you find out why. I love that quote. And then not on, on top of that, he gives them all shares in the company. Absolutely. <laughs> what a combination, right? Yes. And here we go. Ooh, spinning Speaking elbow of combinations, there. nice spinning elbow. O'Connor got caught there for a moment, but he continues to grind this thing out. The low center of gravity here for O'Connor has been paying off thus far. Caceres has to keep moving with that leg. When you get a single leg, you never sit still. You've got to keep him moving enough balance so you can change up to whatever else you want to do. He's now abandoning that. Tom O'Connor has put together quite the fight here, two rounds in, but you Advanced, gotta finish it. You're only as good as Advanced, your last round, your here. last minute. Can Casera somehow yeah. dig down and and use that striking ability? Gonna need to pull something big off, that's for sure. It's a cliche, but I think that's one of the reasons why we love the sport so much, is it only does take one. And, and Caceres digs down indeed, lands a few shots. O'Connor, though, has more pep in his step and more juice. He lands the big right hand and now closes the distance again, and it is back to square one and now for no way Caceres. Really in trouble, Neon Belly up against the cage, so he's stuck. Look at him trying to kick his hips over. Look at him, he just pulls him over. That's fatigue. But I'll tell you, Caceres is not going away. O'Connor continues to punish. George Allen watching very, very closely. O'Connor's ragdolling him right now, my friend. And this fight's gonna be over. George Allen says stop the madness. Tom O'Connor, big nasty with a big win. And he moves on in the tournament. What do you make of uh, Mr. O'Connor now moving to nine and one? He's buzzsaw, buddy. He is going to be in trouble in this division as we are literally with these tournaments defining the divisions within the XFC. You see the needs, you see the tenacity, the viciousness of a guy like Tom O'Connor. O'Connor, I'm sure, at some point in this fight, could feel Caceres melt, literally melting. 
You can feel it when they break physically and mentally. And here he just knows he just needs to keep his foot on the gas pedal and is going to get the finish. Look at him, he just pulls him over. You don't do that to someone who's not fatigued. No doubt about it, that is how he got it done and was able to notch that finish on top of it all. Good fight, gentlemen, good fight. Look at the emotion, big nasty Tom O'Connor. Let's get our official decision with Blake Chadwick. Ladies and gentlemen, at two minutes of round number three, your winner via TKO in the red corner, Tom. Nasty! So big nasty Tom O'Connor advances in the tournament. Let's see how he did it. It was quite masterful here, able to negate all that height and reach. Non-stop pressure. Just non-stop pressure and aggression and great technique on the inside fighting. Tom O'Connor really putting on a performance here at XFC 43 to say the least. Great sportsmanship. Let's take a look at the bracket and see how it looks. Tom O'Connor, the first man to move on in this lightweight bracket. He will meet the winner of Kenny Cross and Jarrell Askew, which we will see on our main card starting at 9 p.m. on NBC Sports. Tom O'Connor, the Canadian, moves on. So folks, we are going to continue to look at these fighters. We have some incredible fighters. Let's take a look at our next awesome XFC athlete. This is just another day. This is my job and, and they saw something in me and I see something in myself. So I'm gonna go out there and prove everybody right. I feel being the first fighter signed for the relaunch of XFC is, it's a task, but there's pressure with every fight. I continue to improve and train harder when I have more pressure added to me. I chose XFC because the loyalty that Myron's always had, the love and the passion, what he proves to me, his words are true, and I think XFC is gonna be a problem. I feel like this is one of the up and coming promotions and there's ways to uh, make money in this sport, and I feel like this is a good opportunity. Hard work can come success and greatness. So I'm here to make a blueprint for fighters to travel outside their comfort zone and to continue to, to grow into a better human being and to be the best athlete, father, son that they can be. I always think highly in my business moves and, and who I'm performing for and under their lights. So for me, I expect to grow in this company and I expect the company to grow along with me. And to do that, I have to go out there and I have to put these guys to sleep. So just tune in and, and enjoy the ride. Well, let's take a look at that welterweight tournament as we have already seen two men move on, Ryan Dixon and LaRue Burley. You'll see Ryan Dixon is in the semifinals, but who is he going to meet? Well, we're about to find out between Bobby Nash and Spencer Jeb. Speaking of Nash, let's take a closer look at Bobby Nash. I want to win the welterweight title, and I want to be one of the faces of this promotion. My fighting style is aggressive, explosiveness, push the pace. So I am still very hungry to compete in mixed martial arts. I know the level athlete I am, and XFC gives me that platform to compete. And I know without a doubt, I am the best I have ever been in my entire life. And since I was five years old, about this big, I was wrestling. Went all the way to high school, wrestled, won a high school state title. From there, I had the privilege of wrestling in the Big Ten for Michigan State University, where I started. Got into mixed martial arts, made it all the way to the UFC, fought in the UFC, had a lot of very tough fights. Here I am today and I'm here with XFC now. I do know a little bit about Spencer Jeb. I've been doing some research on him. He's a very tough opponent and I think the matchmakers of XFC did a wonderful job on matching this fight. 
They want a fan-friendly fight, and I think they got the right opponent. I want the absolute best Spencer Jeb November 11th, so when I beat him, I know I beat the best. I'm going to be a fan-friendly fighter. I'm coming for knockouts. I'm coming to dominate people, and I'm just coming correct every fight. And there he is, Bobby Nash D himself. There's Bobby Nash ready to get it on inside of the hexagon. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape in this matchup. As you can see, height nearly the same, reach nearly the same, and age is the same. Who wants it more? And who is going to move on in the tournament? Let's go to Blake Chadwick to get us started. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a quarterfinal bout in the XFC Welterweight Tournament set with three five-minute rounds of action. Introducing first, standing to my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands at five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 169.5 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of 13 wins and seven losses and fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta. Canada. He is Spencer Judge. And his opponent to my left fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle wrestler stands at six feet tall. He weighed in at 170 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of nine wins and four losses and fighting out of St. Clair Michigan, he is nasty, Bobby Nash. Referee assigned to this fight, Blake Grice. Blake Grice is the official assigned here, and here we go, three five-minute rounds. Here's we is back in the welterweight tournament. Who's going to move on, ready? and who is going to take on ready? Dixon? Fight. Bobby Nash is in the blue, Spencer Jeb is in the black, and we are on and popping here. Cyrus Fees alongside Pat Militich, a couple of Iowa boys here on the call for you. <laughs> I tell you what, Nash has some very crisp hands, beautiful. He started out with a nasty left hook, straight right hand. And they're hunting the liver with that lead leg kick. Watch out there for Spencer Jeb, a guy that seven of his 13 victories Coming by way of first round stoppage. He likes to end it very early. Moved his Bobby head. Nash. Moved his head and fired a right hand. Both these guys, very dangerous hands. I'll tell you one thing you'll notice when you look up and down this roster, you look at their records, it's a lot of finishers. We don't have a whole lot of guys that like to take this fight to the decision. These guys are looking to get a finish, looking to get a big extra bonus, even uh, maybe some more shares in the company, if you will, when it comes to the XFC. Yes, sir. How many shares do you have, Pat? I think that's the real question. Um, I, look, I'm not. Uh, you better get your advisor. I'm at liberty here. to to, uh, to discuss <laughs> these things. <laughs> Fair enough. Bobby Nash moving in here. A UFC veteran here is Bobby Nash. Now looking to make his name here in the XFC. Last time we saw him in action, it was a first round, one minute finish over Mark Stoddard. See if he can keep that wave going. Jeb doing a good job now. He respects the power. He spelled a couple of those shots from Nash. Now he's making sure he gets out of the way most of the time. If he sees them coming. Spencer Jeb coming off a split decision loss. That was, I believe, in June of last year. So Jeb looking obviously very hungry. And with the pandemic as it is, it's been hard to get a fight really anywhere. So we're glad to have a platform here for these fighters. And they've had to really kind of sit on the sidelines here. And it's been kind of tough to watch that. It has, no. And, and you know, the, so many athletes and everybody across the country just wanting to go to work, I guess. But um, these guys obviously some very hardworking young men. They've stayed in shape, stayed ready, and they got the call. Yeah, we waited for that opportunity, including our alternates, one of which is actually getting the call here tonight, that being Stephen Newell. Spencer Jeb here trying to establish himself at the halfway point of round number one. If, you know, funny, we were talking to Kenny Rice, who you're going to be working with. 
on the call in our main card. I'll be up there ring announcing, but he said, you know, it's horse jockeys and then fighters. It's really the only profession where if you don't fight or you don't ride, you don't get paid. Right. Yeah. No guarantees. Or at least very rarely. Certainly. Good jab by Nash. These guys, you know, virtually identical when you talk about height, reach, age. Spencer Jeb, you, you got to like the aggressiveness. The guy not really giving up an inch to Bobby Nash and keeping him on his back feet. Well, it probably explains the flat nose. <laughs> yeah. His style of fighting. He comes forward, brother. Oh, boy. He, he pulled back and hit hard with that outside leg kick. Switches oh. stance and Nash. That was a nasty shot. He's... Put it in the books. Bobby Nash with authority moves on to the tournament. Well, there you go. Beautiful shot. You talk about flattened nose. Well, yeah, that didn't help it much right. by any stretch. No, it didn't. That was beautiful. Right hand straight down the middle. The timing was perfect. We well, gotta love that fire. He says, welterweight division, I'm winning the tournament. Bobby Nash, if you don't believe you're going to win this whole thing, don't even be in it. Bobby Nash gets the win. Let's take a look how it went down. There it was. He squared Ooh, up. baby. His footwork was not in place. We'll see it again. You can see. Watch how he steps and he squares up. Oh, man, Left foot right was off the, the ground. He didn't have that. He didn't have that stance correct. And when he got hit, was completely off balance on one foot. See him bringing the left leg back right here. Boom, Ooh. gets clipped right, right on the money. No leg on the ground behind him to hold him up. And down he goes. And that is the best time to attack. Look how Nash takes advantage of it and fires that right hand. That's why he dropped him. And well, gets in for the finish. You know, well, tonight he definitely lived up to that name. Let's go up to Blake for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, at three minutes, 33 sec 36 seconds of round number one, your winner via TKO in the red corner, Nasty Bobby Nash. So there it is, Bobby Nasty, as I said, living up to that nickname because that was a nasty finish indeed. That one, a huge TKO for the Michigan native. Looking good and moving on the tournament. Let's Here it take is. a look Here at it, it again. again. Watch him. I can Bring watch this that all left night. leg back. Gets clipped and Nash is on it. He is not wasting a moment. Hesitation gets you in trouble, and that's what happened to Jeb. He hesitated, was going to throw a kick, messed his stance up, and bam. Nash takes advantage of it. He certainly did, and Jeb looked really good, but it was just that one mistake, and he paid dearly for it. That's the thing of this sport. One mistake, and you don't come back from it. A lot of other sports, you can make mistakes, and you can come back from it. Not in this one. As we get ready to hear there from Bobby Nashty. One more time, like I said, I could watch it all day long. Give me all the angles. Bobby Nash getting the big win, and the most impactful finish thus far. Now, matched up, we got our first semifinal matchup, ready to rock. Bobby Nash and Ryan Dixon, both guys finishing their opponents extremely early. That is going to be a clash yeah. at XFC 44. Let's go back to Blake Chadwick. He has Bobby Nash. Bobby Nash, a nasty shot. About three and a half minutes into round number one. Take us through that final sequence. Oh man, uh, you know, <laughs> Everybody's worried about my left hand, my left hook, and I, I landed the left hand a few times, but uh, this is the first time I really leaned a, landed a clean right hand, and I really got to thank that, that to Michigan top team, Kara Rowe, Darren Cruikshank, Jason Fisher. I have an amazing team, and they've developed my hands. Guys, I'm a, I'm a college wrestler, in case you're wondering, but I like throwing the fuck down with my hand, so. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Nash, you're on into the semifinals of the welterweight tournament. You're going to take on Ryan Dixon at XFC 44. What are you looking for moving forward in this tournament? Uh, you know, I'm really excited to uh, move in, move on with this promotion and the tournament. Ryan Dixon is extremely talented. I believe he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. But uh, 
I mean, I'm putting this uh, division and I'm putting this tournament on notice right away. And that's what we, that was the game plan. Come in here and put this on notice. Let's let everyone know who I am and I'm coming. Might as well put the strap on me now. Let's go, Dusty! Yeah! So there it is. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. I got to stay a little humble. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> Bobby Nasty. Yeah, he said just put the belt on me right now. Why not? You got to love that gumption by Bobby Nash. Take a look at the fight card. It all kicks off 9 p.m. Eastern on NBC Sports Network. And of course, Austin Bassey ends up Perezzo kicking off for Rhea. Sukumdot is going to be your main event. Speaking of which, let's take a closer look and one of the toughest fighters on the roster and one of our main eventers, Andre Sukumtai. I'm really excited to represent my family and my Lao culture in the XFC cage and really show the world what kind of fighter I can be. I'm first generation Laos and growing up, you know, I always had hardworking parents. They were immigrants. I never starved at night, but we didn't have the best things either. That always inspired me to work hard also, and I really liked sports as a kid, so I always told my parents, I'm gonna be the first big professional Laos athlete. And here I am now, probably one of the biggest Lao MMA fighters in the world. I definitely feel like I'm here for a reason and that God put me here to make some noise. I'm not just a fighter, but I'm also a dedicated father, married to my wife, Jamie. Uh, we've been together for 13 years. She's been with me this whole roller coaster. My next big goal is just to show the world the best Andre Sukumtut there is and just perform to my best potential every time I'm in, in that cage, be a good role model and a good example outside the cage also. Hopefully that just inspires the younger generation. My fighting style, I fight very aggressively, I fight very violently, and I have a big heart, I don't give up. Stand and bang, baby. I think that everyone will see my warrior spirit. Faria, I know you're a good fighter, but come November 11th, I'm coming to give you your first loss in the XFC Hexagon. Get ready for battle, get ready for war. Woo, bomb away. Hey, we're going right into our next bout. This one, of course, is in that welterweight tournament. It is Carson Hardman and Stephen Newell who stepped in today. That's right, last minute replacement. We are ready to rock. Let's go to Blake Chadwick for the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the action inside the hexagon continues with the following quarterfinal bout in the XFC welterweight tournament set with three five-minute rounds of action. Introducing first to my right, fighting out of the blue corner. This wrestler stands at six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 169 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of nine wins and one loss and fighting out of Newport, Kentucky. He is relentless, Steven Newell. And his opponent to my left, he is fighting out of the red corner. This striker stands at five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 169.5 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of eight wins and two losses and fighting out of Lehigh, Utah. He is Carson, the perfect storm. Herbin! The referee assigned to this bout, Herb Dean. The great Herb Dean is your official for this one as we find out who is going to move on here in the welterweight Ready. Ready. tournament. Let's fight. Carson Hardman there in the black, Stephen Newell in the white, and here we go. And of course, Stephen Newell in the white steps in today as Bradley Desir was unable to fight. But they had Newell ready, and that's one thing that the XFSA did. They had guys in each tournament, each matchup, ready with an alternate. And this time it paid off. What very what, talented. What an opportunity, right? What an opportunity. And uh, Newell, credit to him Fingers for up. being ready. 
and being committed. Other athletes were here in case something happened, in case somebody tested positive, in case somebody didn't make weight. And uh, hats off to all those athletes that were willing to do that. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a, it's a tough job indeed. As Carson Hartman with the big left hands, great head movement. And he is going to make life tough here on Newell, a guy that actually picked up a win down in Brazil for XFC. Stop. Time. We Hard. were down in Brazil, and Newell had just happened to Fingers be down there up. and actually had a or ton closed. of his fights in Brazil. Not pointing at the eyes. Up. Yeah, close. fighting the away game, can't right? Can't keep warning. Yeah, most definitely. Went down Fight. there to train jiu-jitsu, and turned out, you know, he uh, became quite the uh, accomplished fighter, to say the least, after that XFC win, ran off five or six wins in a row. He just got warned by Herb Dean, though, for, I believe, having the fingers out there, eye poke. Yeah. Now, Hardman has very heavy hands. I mean, he, he throws bombs, but Newell has been very accurate. Look at him landing that long left hook. A Utah product there is Carson Hardman, the perfect storm. They got a nice little MMA scene out there in Utah. Yeah, one of my good buddies, Jeremy Horn, out there coaching and running the gym as well. Oh, here come the knees. There was a time it was only out in a few places there, Beth. <laughs> Iowa, <laughs> California, right. only a few places out there. Hardman just coming forward with He's throwing straight for Now, this guy is relentless, is hard to Now, Newell gets a hold of that Oh, leg. he got dropped with that right hand. Oh, he may be hurt. Carson Hardman lands the right hand. Could yeah. it be the beginning oh, of the end huge for elbows, Newell? huge elbows. Well, they call him relentless Stephen Newell, and he's not giving up yet, Pat. Oh, my goodness, on the yes. money. Stop, stop. And Herb Dean steps in. The perfect storm stays perfect tonight in Atlanta. In the middle of a takedown, Newell gets blasted. Well, I'll tell you, finishes on top of finishes. That's why you tune in to an XFC card. What an awesome fight. And Carson Hardman, you know, he's the perfect storm. Newell's relentless, but I think it was Hardman that was relentless. This guy could not be slowed down. Uh, he, you know, he just comes forward and he's throwing very heavy punches. Obviously has a great chin. He got hit by Newell several times while coming forward. Now look at this. Watch this. Yep. Boom, right there, drops I it. I mean, foot in the air, can't even plant a foot to throw it. That just shows the type of power this kid has. Well, think about this. Everyone's taught to punch. Your punching power comes from the ground up. He didn't even have his foot on the ground, like you said, to generate the power and still dropped him. Newell, I don't think, expected a punch to come and hit him that hard stop, in the stop. middle of a takedown. Here it is. Watch this. Eyes closed. Didn't oh even see goodness. it coming. Did not even see it coming. I mean, right foot in the air. Oh. And here comes the big finish. Herb Dean knew immediately. Then Newell was hurt, and that was a great stoppage. Let's go back to Blake Chadwick here with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, at two minutes, 12 seconds of round number one, your winner via TKO in the red corner, Carson, the perfect storm. Hardman! Carson Hardman, what a finish, just chock full of highlights. And he is a bundle of dynamite here in this division. So let's take a look and see how it all went down. And Stephen Newell, he thought he had something there looking for a takedown, but Hardman answered. Yes, he did. Put him down with that shot and then started to really get after it. Look at him get that single, or that takedown attempt, that hand off of him, and then start drilling these vicious elbows into the side of the head. And Newell trying to hide from him, put his head on the other side, which fundamentally is a mistake on a single leg, then switched up to a double, so he still was aware. One there more time. Eyes closed. Is that, that might be the highlight of the night thus far. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, beautiful shot. Carson Hardman showing he is the real deal. Deserves to be here in the XFC, and he will move on in the tournament. And here's the finish, how it all ended. Hardman. Just punching the life out of Newell. What a finish here at XFC 43. All smiles for the Utah native. Let's go to Blake, who's standing by here with Carson. Carson, last minute replacement here. Didn't necessarily expect this to be your opponent. Take us through your pre-match strategy, knowing you were facing someone different. Nothing. Nothing changes. It's about what you do. It's not 
you're going to find your end. It's all going to come to an end if you plan on too much on opponents. So we try to build the character rather than build your strategy around the person that you're fighting. So it took you a little over two minutes to get through round number one. Now you're on into the semifinals. What's your outlook here for the rest of the tournament? Just kidding. Keep being me. Just keep doing my thing. That's it. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. Uh, it's simple. It's simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Noth nothing big. Now let's go back to Cyrus. Thank you so much, Blake, man. Uh, man, a few words. He uh, lets his hands do the talking. As you can take a look at the bracket, now it is LaRue Burley and Carson Hardman. And I'll tell you, that one kind of gets my mouth water, and that's going to be a big matchup. No, I love the way the bracket has shaped up. We've got four hammers in there. Going to be good. Gorgeous. As you take a look, that's going to be XFC 44 in February, but tonight, Yes, indeed. 9 p.m. is when it all kicks off. Eastern Standard Time, NBC Sports Network. As you take a look at that full card, man, it looks good, and it is going to knock your socks off tonight. Well, folks, let's get to know the second part of our main event from Brazil, Guilherme Faria. The moment I'm inside in the cage is... It's magic because it's, I love this. This is my life. I never lost in XFC. I have three victories, uh, two knockouts. The best moment in my career, 2015, five years ago, versus Misael in Brazil. Uh, I victory the knockout in maybe one minute, and this is amazing moment. Uh, XFC is, uh, is my house. Uh, XFC changed my life. A lot of people follow my career because of the XFC. I'm ready to, to make one big fight, one big show for everyone. Andre um, is a good fighter and have a lot of experience. Uh, I have more fights and more experience. I have more knockouts and I have focus. I, I, I no stop, I go straight. I train every day. Where the fight stay, I'm ready. In striker, jiu-jitsu, grappling, let's go. I believe, nah, knockout. Uh, or submission. This is my moment, why now? I never lost in the XFC. That's not gonna change November 11th. I'm here to give you your first loss in the XFC. I hope you're ready for a battle, man. What I want to accomplish in the XFC is for myself. I have unfinished business. So let's take a look at this lightweight bracket. Once again, the only man that has advanced thus far tonight is Tom O'Connor out of Canada. But now we are about to dig in just a little bit deeper as it is our final fight here on the prelim card. Dewan Owens and Scott Hudson, America and Canada, battling here at XFC 43. And there's the man, they call him Dirty South, Dewan Owens, and he's been doing this for a long, long time, Pat. Extremely savvy veteran and a guy that's fought all around the world on top of that. We are talking about his 33rd professional fight tonight here in Atlanta. Yeah, and I've called a couple of his fights before. He will throw. He will throw nonstop. Without a doubt, the great Dewan Owens, he has a great personality, and he's actually told me personally that he feels like he's going to win this tournament right off into the sunset. That's how he sees this thing going down. All right. So this is a, you know, a very big moment for him, Dewan, Allen, Dewan Owens. Dirty South, as he awaits his opponent, the man they call handsome Scott Hudson, an experienced fighter himself. 
this going to be his 17th professional fight. And there's something about these experienced fighters. You know, you love to see the opportunities that they're getting here, Pat. Uh, MMA is so popular right now, so busy, but there's only a few shows that are really next level international. XFC is one of those shows, relaunch, rocking, and one of these guys is looking to become the king of the lightweight division. It's amazing. Yeah. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape and take a closer look at the numbers here. 33 and 35, respectively. You see the height advantage will most definitely go to Scott Hudson. Four inches on the reach. Will it make a difference? Who will move on to the semis? We go to Blake Chadwick. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a quarterfinal bout in the XFC lightweight tournament set with three five-minute rounds of action. Introducing first to my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands at five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 155 pounds with a record of 18 wins, 13 losses, and one draw. And fighting out of Kerry, North Carolina, he is Dova. Dirty South. Dirty South. And his opponent, to my left, fighting out of the red corner. He is a mixed martial artist standing at six feet, two inches tall. He weighed in at 155.5 pounds. He enters this fight with a record of 11 wins, four losses, and one draw. And fighting out of Hamilton, Ontario, he is handsome. George Allen. George Allen, the veteran ref here out of Georgia. And here we go as we try to find our next semifinalist here in the XFC Lightweight Tournament. The relaunch of the XFC, Cyrus Fees, alongside the you legend, ready? Pat Militich. The Croatian sensation, if you will. And here we go. It is Dewan Owens. Hudson. Taking on Hudson. Hudson, a guy with very good Muay Thai skills, but if you leave your neck open against him, he will choke you. A lot of guillotine finishes. Yeah, we talked about it being kind of up and down the roads to one Owens. Close those hands. Your fingers are out. Back up a little bit. There we go. Fight. So George Allen trying to get ahead of this uh, very, very early, trying to keep Close these guys hands. from any sort of incidental eye pokes here with Hudson and Owens. Snuck in a nice head kick, did Owens. George Allen fought on the card here. I can't even tell you how many years ago it was. Um, when I was cornering Marcus Davis, the Irish hand grenade down here. My goodness. In this very building. A history lesson tonight here on XFC 43. We love the Irish hand grenade, no doubt about it. Canceling each other out here. Another nice high kick by Owens, but Hudson trying to make him pay. How many more miles? Does Jawan Owens have left on that body? He says he wants to finish this tournament up. And as he said, right off into the sunset. Can he make that destiny happen here in the XFC? He wins this tournament, though. I don't know if they're just going to let him ride off. <laughs> they may want him to, you know, keep riding a little bit longer here right? in the XFC. Yeah. Well, he's done a good job so far on the outside when he has to cover up and then fire back at Hudson. He's keep that up. We are choosing to stay in tight. Scott Hudson riding a four-fight win streak right now. Wins over Darrell Askew, who you're going to see in our main card. Wins over Dewan Pinckney, Adam Hazleton, and Xavier Nash. And all of those tough, tough fights. Couple by decision, a couple by choke. Dewan Owens fights out of the corner, and we're back in the center of the XFC X. Owens needs to set those kicks up. It's too easy to see him coming. Hudson just moves his leg. Of course, we are, feels like moments away, only an hour and some away from kicking things off. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC Sports. Yes, indeed. Coming back in a big way with our main card, Maria Sukumtat on top of that card. Jessica Aguilar will make her debut here in the XFC as well. Now here comes the knees from handsome Scott Hudson. Ooh, 
very solid knee there. Now some elbows. That'll take the wind out of your sails real quick. It will. Owens has to watch out because he is measuring those knees. Now measuring the elbows to go with it. Hard shots, almost a no look strike there by Owens. Right. I've seen a lot of no look passes. I don't know about a whole lot of no looks. The, the, <laughs> kicks. That's, that's the first no look sidekick I've seen. <laughs> Chains in the game here in his mid 30s, Dewan Owens. Wow, and Hudson, man, does he put some power behind those kicks and those knees. Pat, I'm telling you, Owens isn't going to last long if he takes too many of those. He seems like he's wearing out a little bit already. Uh, more knees to the body, these elbows. Good trip. Of course, DeJuan Owens wins in his career over a number of top contenders. And here comes the sledgehammer shots by Hudson. Elbows, elbows raining down by the Canadian. How Hudson is, or Bill Owens is not cut wide open from those elbows, I have no clue. And still uh, more than enough time here for Hudson to notch in a finish. And now it looks like Owens is just going to try to stall him out oh, by any cut. means necessary. Yes, the blood has been spilled on those beautiful mats here at the XFC. So far, six fights, six finishes. It has been a roller coaster ride here in Atlanta. Owens had to get his legs uncrossed there. That's a pretty good position to lock his hips down. He knew he had to get out of that position. He was going to need a lot of leverage. Diving in, here comes some more ground and pound by Scott Hudson, who wants to put an exclamation mark on this matchup in advance of the tournament. And he's well on his way at this point, Pat. Somehow, though, Owens still surviving. Owens coming off of two straight losses right now. A couple of TKOs. Is this going to be the end of the career for Dirty South Dewan Owens, or is he going to be able to survive and get to the next round? Great defense there on the bottom. And he will live to fight another round. Hudson was trying to get him out of there. He worked hard, and he worked hard trying to get him out of there. He wanted to end that fight, and sometimes you get that in your mind, you get it set in your mind, and you can wear yourself out, Pat. Sure, he looks like he's in great shape, though. There's a kick just a little high on the body, not, not on the oh. liver. Now, beautiful counter right hand by Juan, and there's the perfect time of the kick. Boot that leg out from underneath him, the supporting leg, and then go to work on the ground. Here it comes. Scott Hudson so there it sets is. and fires there. Beautiful kick, you know, right place, right time. There's so many reasons to, you've got to set your kicks up with punches. You absolutely must, especially at the high level like this. Because if you don't, you're going to get taken down, you're going to get countered with punches, or you're going to get your leg booted up from underneath you. And there you saw one of them. And there's Hudson trying to get the finish. Well, he worked extra hard. and. But I think uh, looking to carry this momentum into round two, what does Dewan Owens have to do, Pat? It's not going to be easy to answer ready? back. Ready? He's going to have to dig down deep. Stay inside and land over and rights. Well, there you go. That's the recipe right there. He may have heard that. You know, it's <laughs> middle of the pandemic. A lot of the times you fighters hear this advice. Right, well, I mean, his corner's got to know that he lost that first round. So they're saying get after it. There, he caught the kick. You know, I, I have a, a past, you know, I've known Dewan over the years, so I've had a chance to talk to him a lot over the last few days, and man, he's very, he's been thinking very positive and very, very confident coming into this fight. He knows what this means to his career. Hudson is looking to end a career tonight. A jumping knee from Scott Hudson getting airborne in Atlanta. Oh, it's definitely, you can tell the wires got crossed on that right hand, and he tried the elbow. Tried a rolling elbow there behind his back. Came up short, hit with the tricep barely. Going further into fight has always benefited Dewan Owens. This is a guy that has won most of his fights by way of decision. He likes to drag it into deep rounds, which is what he's trying to do here. Maybe trying to wear out Hudson. Hudson, beautiful little trip there. Now he's figure forward and locked down the leg. 
Hudson fighting out of Canada has been on a tear as of late. This is such a, a tough division, and it only gets deeper and deeper as we go, Pat. 155 has always been that division. There's always so many fighters worldwide, and you can pick, you can pick them, and they can continue to get picked on, and you can still have world champions out there waiting to be signed. It's 100%. incredible. Yeah, and the 170-pound division is, is that division, in my mind anyway, where they have immense amount of power, where they, they do have some of the guys do have you know, heavyweight knockout power, and they have great athleticism and speed as well. So the fights are always going to be exciting. When we get to get that, we'll that fight. You got it. Three minutes to go here in round number two as Hudson continues to work on Owens. He has a lot of time to work with. You've got to believe he needs to be calm and he needs to take his time here and be more measured and not wear himself out. Now he's got the arm trapped. He reached behind his back and hooked that arm. See how he's got his hand hooked back? But on that bottom arm, far side wrist control, we call that. That is a nightmare to be in, to not get stuck in that because you end up getting hot shotted like this. Yeah, Hudson just overwhelming Owens thus far. As we sit at the halfway point here in the Tabernacle, wow, this place, formerly a church. Uh, it really doesn't beat the atmosphere here at the Tabernacle in Atlanta and a perfect place to relaunch XFC. Imagine, the, look at the organ up there. Beautiful. <laughs> it's incredible. A concert venue, of course, concerts have kind of been grinded to a halt. Uh, now, able to put this thing together against all odds to get this fight going here in Georgia. It really is pretty incredible to have a fan base here, to have fans in attendance. Of course, abiding by all those strict COVID guidelines, the mask, the distancing. No one's trying to turn back into it. Still surviving here is Dewan Owens. That's something he has done and made a trademark of in his career. And still has a little juice left here, has a little gas left in the tank here, Pat. Do you hear me? I'm going to take a point. Okay, what's he warning him for there? I'm going to take a point. You grab that cage one more time. Hey. Listen to me. And you can hear it ready? very, very clearly. Here we go. Here we go. We'll be gone if you grab a hold of that cage one more time. Dewan Owens has been warned. Sometimes those veteran moves can pay off kind of those savvy little cage grabs, but George Allen is very keen to it. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, if you're if you're smart and you're in a bad position and you want to get warned by the ref to save your tail, of course. I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Right? You better believe it. The best of the best use it to their advantage, sure. no doubt about it. Hey, there's a light heavyweight out there that's been known to use that eye poke at least once every fight. <laughs> get the warning, just don't use it anymore. <laughs> Setting up the kick is handsome Scott Hudson. And he landed that to the liver, and then a hard punch, and Owens doesn't seem phased well, at all. Well, he just keeps walking right through it, yeah. fighting out of Cary, North Carolina, right outside of Raleigh, and showing that he is very much still in this fight. Don't count out, Dirty South. Close that hand. And I'll tell you, you know, I mean, for what it is, has looked really good in this last minute, has DeJuan Owens. It's impressed me that he still got that much left, Pat. Yeah. There's another liver kick. Now, was it enough to take the round? I don't think so. That being said, does he carry some momentum into the third round? I think so. Possibly. He looks pretty fatigued, but he keeps grinding. When you get into the emotional aspect and you get into the dramatics and, and you talk about, is your career over? Do you want to continue to do this thing? One of the hardest jobs in the world, doing what these guys do, staying up training, continuing to stay in shape, even during the middle of a, a worldwide pandemic. And that's what these guys have done. They have been fired up by our president, Myron Malaki, and they know what it means to be a part of this great organization, which is officially back in the limelight, the XFC. Scott Hudson, by all accounts, is in the lead and sitting at, you would imagine, a couple of 10-9 rounds. I don't think he got anything 10-8, but uh, definitely ahead in this fight. Oh, yeah, he's got the edge, two rounds to nothing, more than likely. Do your thing, okay? Greg Allen. 
Another few words with him. Going over to LaRue now. We'll talking to him. Dewan okay, Owens was just signaling to the crowd here. They were only able to pack a few hundred in here just because of the regulations. Fight. And because of what the Tabernacle is, it's a small venue. It's a beautiful venue, but it's a small venue. But Dewan Owens wants to get all that support, wants to bring it out of the Southerners here in Atlanta. Is this one last hurrah for Dirty South Dewan Owens? Well, it seems like the further we get into these rounds, the more energy and the better Owens looks. So you do that before. Eat a lot of leather early on and then start steaming back. Is there any way that round two is interesting enough to where somebody might see it the other way? Potentially, potentially. Yeah, I mean, he stayed pretty busy. Especially at the end of the round. So keep that in mind, folks, if we should go the distance here. And if anybody's going to go the distance, it's that man Owens. And Scott Hudson has been in the driver's seat, but you got to finish the fight. Nobody cares what the score is in the third quarter. Well, I tell you what, you just never know. The Georgia Athletic Commission is very good. A lot of very experienced people on this, one of the better athletic commissions in the nation. But you still never know. You don't want it to go to the judges. No, and they really have it. Our athletes here at the XFC have continued to show us that they want finishes. And they uh, want to make their play for fight of the night, knockout of the night, submission of the night. They want more shares in this company. They want more money in their pocket. Scott Hudson steps through with that big right hand and it glances past Owens. Well, he's throwing any trick, the kitchen sink, everything is Dewan Owens. Yes, he is. He's landed quite a few. Well, even if he doesn't win the fight, it might land him a spot in an action movie. You know, one of those? Yeah, that's possible. He's showing us something. Well, I do. I, I really love oh, the knees there. I do like the way he throws a round kick, and if it misses, we'll turn it into a side kick. Oh, right down the middle. Nice, nice timing by Owens. Boy, he's having fun out there. There's the side kick. And, and Hudson's allowing him to play a little bit. I think he's kind of playing right into Owens' playbook. Does he think he's up two rounds to nothing and not wanting to risk anything big? It doesn't pay off often. Right. Scott Hudson on, on the on the doorstep of making it to the semifinals here, but not the time to let off of the gas. Seen it too many times before. job of attacking him when he comes in. Every time he's throwing something at him. We only got two minutes left in this fight. Then, of course, we'll take a small break, and then we will lead into the incredible main card, NBC Sports. That'll be at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Do not miss that. Outside leg kick by Hudson now, maybe starting to get back into his rhythm. We haven't seen much of that here in round number three. And Owens, this is not the time. Oh, beautiful time. Here comes Hudson. That one landed squarely. Owens still standing up. He's potentially here. Nice elbow. And that hurt him. That hurt him. He fell into the cage face first. But he keeps coming forward, Pat. If this is the end of the career, what a way to go out. Blood streaming down your face, fighting a brutal fight here against a younger Scott Hudson. And really much a physical, much bigger Scott Hudson. Indeed. Yeah, Hudson, a big lightweight. He really is. Very good. Come on, come on. This is what these guys train for. Those long days, long nights in the gym, seven days a week, never take a break. It's for moments like this, fighting through it, moving on in the tournament. Who's it going to be? All that work for 15 minutes. Yeah. Huh? Hudson using small elbows there, just slowly picking away at Owens. He knows he most likely has a lead, and with this last minute of action, he may take the third round as well. Right. Come on, come on. Oh, look at one soft choke. 
He's going to walk around with this. Oh, mounted guillotine. Very tough one to get out of. Only 10 seconds left, though. Can Owens survive? It looks like he will. Look at that. Owens gets out. Good for him. Owens gets up, and that is where we will leave it. They go the distance for the first time tonight. We go to the judges' scorecards, and Pat, what do you make of it? You know, it was a valiant effort there by Dewan Owens, but I think we would agree that Scott Hudson outpointed him tonight. Yeah, Hudson, Hudson and he, I think, just kind of a mismatch physically in my mind. Owens obviously plenty tough enough. Oh yeah, Dewan Owens two, three, four years ago, I think that's not gonna be an issue. Hudson liked to step in and hit that trip. Counters that body kick with a right hand. Oh, look at that impact. Straight to the solar plexus, watch the right hand fire back. Nice job bending in half. And there's the timing on the kick. Taking Owens' legs out from underneath him. Hudson getting to work with elbows on the ground a lot. Owens bleeding from under the eye. Beautiful knees to elbows from Hudson during that fight. And I tell you what, Owens doing a great job getting out of submissions, eating big punches, and staying up on his feet. There's the counter right hand. Or the Oh, you got to love it. Stepping right through. That is some vintage Dewan Owens action right there. He wanted to end it with that one. <laughs> that flying knee may have been the beginning of the end, though. I mean, you know, it, it seemed like that was perfectly placed, and it, and it killed any sort of comeback. We will send it up to Blake Chadwick. He has the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scores. All three judges ruled this fight 30-27. Your winner, the unanimous decision in the red corner. Handsome Scott Hudson. Well, there it is. Scott Hudson comes away with the victory and moves on in the lightweight tournament. Big win here by the Canadian tonight. And and I think we can agree, you said it, he's a physically uh, impressive specimen here in this division. And anybody that matches up with him is going to have to deal with that size and deal with that uh, vascularity. He's a tough dude. Some of the Canadians faring well tonight, my friend. Right? Well, certainly, O'Connor moves on, Hudson moves on. Canada looking real strong tonight here at XFC 43. And of course, the remainder of those quarterfinal matchups you got to catch on NBC Sports when our main card kicks off at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is going to be a party here in Hot Atlanta, no doubt about it. Let's take a look at that fight card that we are talking about. We're talking about the debut of Kenny Cross and Austin Bashy, their tryout winners. Jessica Aguilar, her much talked about debut in the XFC, taking on Daniel Taylor and Guillermo Faria, taking on Andre Sukumtat in our main event. Let's go to Blake Chadwick. He is standing by with Dewan Owens. Dewan Owens, the first time on the preliminaries all night long in XFC 43. Someone was able to go the distance. Unfortunately, you came out on the losing end. Take us through the three rounds of action. Tough fight, man. Uh, first round, I remember going back to the corner like, man, shit, this motherfucker came to win. You know, I got to tighten up. Like, I felt, you know, he was strong, technical. A lot of my setups weren't. They weren't landing perfectly. Like my timing was just not, you know. In the second round, you know, I felt a little better. He still lost the round, but I was like, you know what? Coming out in the third round, I was like, I can win this. Pull yourself together. Just let it all go. Just don't be, just, just fight them. Don't, don't have a mixed martial arts bout. Just fight them like the motherfucker was trying to steal something from you on the street. And I still lost the third, but I felt better when I kind of threw caution to the wind. And right when I got really comfortable striking, he took me down. There was a lot of things I felt I could have done technically to try to get up, but his control was good. I knew it would have burned some energy, so I was trying to wait till he postured up big to try to, you know, escape. But um, yeah, just tough, man. You're fighting the opponent and you're fighting the clock. And he was hurting me. He landed some elbows. I didn't feel the pain, but I, I felt like, damn, that's a big one. That's, you can't take too many of those. I felt that a couple times. First round, he hit me with something. I remember thinking, oh shit. 
So it's just, just a tough fight, man. He, he fought fucking good as hell, so. Tough fight for Dewan Owens. Cyrus, back to you. Oh, the very colorful Dewan Owens. <laughs> Even in defeat, very entertaining to say the least. Let's take a look at that updated bracket here. Tom O'Connor moved on earlier on in the prelims. He will face the winner of Kenny Cross and Jarrell Askew. You'll see that on our main card, 9 p.m. NBC Sports. Excited about the debut of Kenny Cross. Then Scott Hudson just gets the winner of Dewan Owens, and he will meet the winner of Boye and Holaba also on the main card. We'll go back to Blake Chadwick, who's standing by with our winner. Handsome Scott Hudson, not too many marks on the face after that one. You go the distance, the first guy to win a decision all evening long. I asked your opponent, take us through the three rounds. Uh, I felt like I was in control of the entire fight. First round, uh, I, I was doing work on the feet. I took him down and, uh, you know, got some good ground and pound. Uh, felt like he controlled the round. I honestly think that 30-27 in that fight was a little bit modest because I felt like I, I, that was a beatdown. So, second round. Um, again, I think I did a little bit, did a little bit more damage standing. Uh, I was really surprised that he didn't go down a couple times because I hit him with some big shots and big knees. Um, I didn't want to get overzealous because I know how tough he is and I know that he can stay in the fight. And I don't, I didn't want to put myself in a position where like he's, uh, you know, takes advantage of me kind of pressing a little too hard. So that's why I was doing my damage, getting out, doing my damage, getting out. And um, that, that, that might have led to a decision and maybe not me finishing the fight. But I think that like nine out of 10 guys fall in that situation. He was just so tough. He's done it his entire career. There was no secret, it's no secret uh, how tough Tuan Owens is. He's got, he's got a reputation for it. And you know, I'm, I'm disappointed that I wasn't able to put him away, but good fight all in all, I'm, I'm content. Scott Hudson, you're not, now riding a five fight win streak. You're on into the semifinals of the lightweight tournament. What's next for you at XFC 44? I'm gonna fight the winner of Holba and uh, boy, that's what's next. There's this. It's not. There's, it's not even a choice. That's what's happening. That is what's happening. Handsome Scott Hudson picks up the victory here. Cyrus, back to you. Got a few. Got a few marks. Got a few marks on the face there. But yeah, I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Just a few. He's looking at me right now. He's like, no, no, no. Still handsome there. Scott Hudson gets the win. Let's take a look. The card, man. It is stacked. It is jacked. Austin Bass, he ends up red. So zero boy eight. Holaba there in the lightweight tournament. Also, Kenny Cross and Askew in the lightweight tournament. Aguilar, yes, Jessica Aguilar will make her debut against Danielle Taylor. And then the main event, it's much talked about. Guillermo Faria, XFC veteran, taking on a newcomer to the promotion, Andre Sukumtat. That, of course, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You gotta be there to experience it right there on NBC Sports. And for now, we will sign off and uh, get back with us at 9 p.m. where Kenny Rice will take over with Pat Militich, and we will bring you XFC 43.